Greetings, welcome back to Prophetic Forecast. It's already been a month, can you believe it? This time we're going to take a look at what took place in February, and we've got a couple of things to look forward to, or at least be mindful of in March. But I want to start today by taking a look at the beginning of the month. Something took place that you may not have heard about. Uh, on February 4th, as the United Nations designated that day, the International Day of Human Fraternity. This was promoted by the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. Uh, and uh, about this day, uh, he tweeted this. This is what he said. He said, as we commemorate the International Day of Human Fraternity, let us commit to do more to promote cultural and religious tolerance, understanding, and dialogue. Now, I want to repeat myself again. I, I know I have to do that because uh, not everyone has heard this whole series. Not everyone's been watching from the beginning. Uh, I strongly encourage you, though, to go back and watch the previous ones because there I give more detail on, uh, on why I bring these things up. But I'll repeat at least briefly here that this sounds great and wonderful. There's nothing satanic or evil about this. We should want to promote cultural and religious tolerance, understanding, and dialogue. There's nothing wrong with that. These are good terms, biblical teachings of that as well. But where this heads, where it's going to, that's, that's why we're paying attention to these things. I want world unity and peace, just if not more, because as a staunch Sabbath-keeping believer, I, I believe that the world is God's creation. I want world unity and peace as well. But also, I accept and I know this cannot be found without true devotion to God, without Jesus at the center. And we've, we've paid enough attention to this idea of the human at the center, this humanistic approach that is so strong in the world for unity and peace, but it doesn't work if the human is at the center. It's got to be Jesus-centric. He has to be in the middle of this or it simply doesn't work. The reason why messages like this are so dangerous is because it falls into the humanistic idea that mankind can save itself, that man can do it on their own. And this goes against the word of God and it, 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 it fulfills prophecies that we've been told about in the book of Revelation. Let's notice a couple of verses here from Revelation chapter 17. Here's verse one. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. So here's a prophecy about this harlot, this false church idea, and it sits on waters. But I want you to catch two verses later. It's not sitting on waters. Notice what it's sitting on. Verse 3. So he, that's the angel, carried me away in the spirit, in other words, he was having a vision, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So this uh, symbology here, this, this illustration, is, is reminding us of Revelation 12, Revelation 13, and Daniel chapter 7. Again, something we've covered quite a bit. In the links below, you'll see a whole series called National Treasure. If you don't have a basic understanding of what the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation represent, what they mean, check out National Treasure. But this woman in verse 1 is sitting on waters. In verse 3, she's sitting on a beast. Are these different things? Well, let's keep reading. Verse 15. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So the woman is described as sitting on both waters and a scarlet beast. And this is because they're the same thing. 
In Daniel chapter 7, the beasts represent kingdoms. And here in chapter 17 of Revelation, the waters represent kingdoms. And so that's why Revelation 17, 1 and 3 say two different things, but they're actually the same meaning. The reason John is being inspired to write the beast is because it connects our minds to Daniel chapter 7, where we pick up a lot of those first elementary basic foundational principles for Bible prophecy. But in the end, they represent the same thing. The woman sits upon the nations, the world, the kingdoms of this world. And in fact, the multitudes, the peoples, the nations, and the languages of the world. The woman sits on them. This false church will sit on the world. In other words, it will control the whole entire world. And this is very strongly repeated. Uh, he, well, this is the repetition, but it's, it's stated first in Revelation chapter 13. The world grants to her authority. In other words, this false system is centric to this world unity. Will world unity uh, be accomplished before Jesus comes? Yes, it will be accomplished, but it will be a false unity, a satanic deception that is not Jesus-centric, but the woman-centric, the false church-centric. It is revolving around the leader of that system, the papacy. So when we see calls for fraternity or unity, we really have two options here. Is it a sincere, godly, Jesus-centric call for unity where Jesus is at the center? Or is this call for unity papal-centric, human-centric? Is this idea that a this false woman, this false church, this harlot woman of Revelation 17 is centric to the principles. That's a big difference for the Christian believer. It's a big difference for the student of Bible prophecy. So where does this uh, UN uh, get the idea of unity? In other words, what I mean by that is who is centric to its beliefs? Who is getting the glory of this United Nations idea for an International Day of Human Fraternity? Well, we will read right off of the UN article, and I've put a link to this article down below, but you'll catch what the article says. Right off the UN website, it says the Secretary General applauded all UN member states who supported the resolution. So everyone, all the multitudes, nations, peoples, and tongues, while also acknowledging a 2019 declaration by head of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, and the Grand Iman of Al-Azhar, Egyptian Islamic scholar, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Tayeb, on human fraternity for world peace. This isn't my opinion here. This is straight from the UN article. Who gets the glory for this International Day of Human Fraternity? False church systems and their heads. How they are working together. So you've got the nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues, right? Uh, here that he's, he's applauding everyone, but mostly the woman who's sitting on the waters, who's sitting on the scarlet beast, who's sitting on the UN member states. In fact, this is what the article said. Here is what uh, the Secretary General himself said. He says, I thank both religious leaders for using their voice to promote interfaith dialogue, mutual respect, and understanding across the faith spectrum. In these trying times, we need this spirit more than ever. Whew. This spirit. We need this. We. Who's we? He is speaking on behalf of the nations of the world. We need this spirit more than ever. Interesting that he said, we need this spirit. 
This is exactly what we've been talking about in this, in this series. This whole series has been about that false spirit, that spirit of Antichrist. In Revelation 13, it's called a fire from heaven. We've talked about that quite a bit. Again, I'll put a link below to uh, a study on that idea of the fire from heaven. This spirit more than ever. The problem, and I, I don't know the secretary general. I can't judge his heart. I don't know if this is ignorance or willingness, I, so I won't go there and discuss it. I won't say this is a big world, you know, Rothschild conspiracy or whatever. Just I'll just point out, whether it's willingness or ignorance, Secretary General who represents the nations of the world is saying, we need this spirit of the woman who's riding on the beast. This false spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Christ puts Jesus at the center. The spirit of Antichrist puts the human at the center. Just right out of the, his own words, the words of Pope Francis himself, the human must be at the center. That's the spirit of Antichrist. And that's the spirit that the secretary general is saying we need more than ever. Fast, quick, approaching of the end times, aren't we? I mean, we are, we are just pedal to the metal, aren't we? Now, last time, we also, we also spent some time discussing the censorship of free speech in the United States, specifically on uh, social media. You can go back and, and watch my comments there. Uh, we were speaking specifically about Parler being kicked off of, uh, basically off of the internet. And yes, I, I, and I spoke about it in more detail than I'll give now. I understand that YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and et cetera um, are, are private corporations who have a right to, to allow a platform to whoever they wish. I get that. I understand that. My point that I was making then, and I, I have some more discussion of that today, is that free speech, again, even though it has consequences, I can't just say whatever I want without consequences. But censorship in the United States should not be, and really cannot be, according to our Constitution, it cannot be, um, it cannot be the, the consequence. Again, yeah, Facebook could kick off whoever they want to kick off, but we can't silence completely people uh, because once you start silencing some, even if they have awful rhetoric, even if they have evil rhetoric, even if they're promoting hate speech, once you start censoring some, you start censoring others who don't deserve it or who the world might think deserves it, but in the end, they don't. Uh, on this topic in February this month, uh, LifeSite News, who we've talked quite a bit about in this in this uh, in these episodes, was actually banned from YouTube, and I don't just mean from uploading new content, but all of their videos were wiped off of YouTube. Uh, it stems mostly from their comments about uh, the vaccine. There is also some comments about election fraud and things. And, and, and let me be clear, if you've watched our episodes before, I'm not a fan of LifeSite News. Typically, I'm pointing at it as, as this, is, this is bad stuff that they're saying, especially when they're glorifying Fatima and telling us that Mary's coming to fix things. Um, but to ban a religious entity for preaching or teaching what they believe is their religious dogma, it at least is dangerous. Yes, YouTube has that right to do it. It is their platform. But it's dangerous in the United States to ban people from the right of free speech. Uh, so again, I don't enjoy their stuff. I don't like their stuff. I don't agree with their stuff. Um, but at least I can say this. At least John Henry Weston and the LifeSite News team, at least they know that their stuff's not politically correct. They know what they're getting into as they try to promote their stuff on YouTube. They know that getting kicked off YouTube is a risk. Okay, I can understand that. I see, I see both sides. John Weston, Henry, and LifeSite should at least know, well, this stuff's probably gonna be taken down as they put that stuff up. That's why many times I'm careful about what I say because I'm most interested 
Not, 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 I don't want to walk on eggshells just because I'm scared of offending people, but because I want to be able to preach the name of Jesus and let the gospel be out. So sometimes I'm careful because I realize that these companies can kick you up. Well, this was their decision. They decided to plow forward. And even if that meant being banned, okay, they were banned. But what about other religious media that is quote unquote woke? That is more PC. I mean, you might think, well, they couldn't get banned. I mean, these guys kind of deserve that, you might say, or at least you might say, well, at least it makes sense. Even if they, you don't believe they deserve it, you might say, well, yeah, okay. It doesn't agree with uh, YouTube's platform, so off they should go. But what about woke cultural um, religious uh, dogmas and teachings? What about them? Could they be kicked off? In light of this, could they be connected to this and this gets banned and though, therefore other religious things get banned? Well, that's exactly what took place. I discovered this week, uh, thank you to a uh, uh, great lawyer, Nicholas Miller, I think is his name, uh, for pointing this out. And then I checked into it myself. Uh, I discovered this week that one of our own church websites is banned by Facebook. It's blocked by Facebook. If you go to try to post a link from www.adventistliberty.org, you can't put that on Facebook. Now, our religious liberty department is really as woke as they come. I mean, I really mean that. I, as far as I can fathom, as far as I know, uh, it is as, um, and when I say woke, they're not laying down the gospel for the sake of being cool. Um, but just that what they say and how their focus is, it should be accepted by anybody and everybody. Everybody, Our, our religious liberty department uh, represents anybody and everybody. And we have lawyers who will fight for people who are fired for keeping Sunday or people who have to wear certain religious garb to work or beards or, hair, or hairstyles. Or we'll represent anybody and everybody, which is a beautiful blessing because Adventists aren't just in it for our religious freedom. We believe that American tenant is everybody should have um, religious freedom. Even those who don't want religion should have that freedom to not have religion if that's what they so choose. I personally tried to post an article. Uh, it was entitled, Why Adventists Have a Unique Contribution to Make to the Racism Discussion. It's actually a wonderful article, um, and it deals with how racism is a sin, and it's abhorrent to God. It's, it's disgusting to God. Wonderful thing. Definitely the world would see it as woke. It would see it as appropriate for this conversation. I mean, there's absolutely nothing about it that in any way is, is stigmatized with a nasty, disgusting taste in your mouth towards people of any color or tribe or uh, community. However, you can't even post this. In fact, this is what happens when I tried to post it. You can't post this, Facebook told me. This URL goes against our community standards on spam, adventistliberty.org. A group who promotes religious liberty for all, including atheists, including those who don't want, you know, religion. I mean, typically, of course, they're probably at war with each other. To be honest, because once I will say, you know, no religion, this side says, yes, religion. But we would be willing to represent if someone was fired uh, for, for being atheist. I mean, don't represent anybody and help anybody as long as it's promoting religious tolerance, understanding, and dialogue, right? True dialogue. And yet, you can't post that. Why? Well, it's simple. Because... There are some bad apples in the Christian world promoting hate. And when we get focused as Christians on hate or lies or twists of the truth, when we get focused on that stuff and we lay down the armor of God, we lay down the cause of Christ, we lay down the gospel of Jesus, and we get focused on this political stuff, and people who are focusing on Christ 
also get taken down with you. You know, I've been saying this for months, a year, more than that. Um, Maybe not in these episodes because these only go back to all but I've been saying it from the beginning of all this stuff that if people stay focused on politics, where even, even Christians who are so focused on politics, we're shooting ourselves in the foot because eventually they're going to take away all of our rights, not just hate speech, but all of our rights. And I think this is, this, this, this is, this is just the beginning. This is just, this is just a tiny thing, but it's something and it's heading in the wrong direction. We are getting distracted. We're screaming and yelling about politics, masks, vaccines, all these things that aren't from the Bible. They're not from our pulpits. They're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be bringing the good news of Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We are losing our focus. And now wonderful groups who are focused, who are trying to help and share love, and who are trying to preach religious tolerance and care for one another, who are teaching true human fraternity, are now being banned. It's a slippery slope when you start to ban some, others fall in as well who don't deserve it. It really does show, it does prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the world, when when the human is at the center, when it's not Jesus at the center, but when the human is at the center, What they mean by religious tolerance really is preach what we want you to preach. This is why, going back to what I said at the beginning, why you have to have the right kind of religious tolerance and understanding and dialogue. It must be Jesus-centric. And uh, when it's not, when it's human-centric, it always will take away the rights of those who are doing the work of righteousness. It's always where it leads. And you look at history, it always leads to the persecution of those doing the work of God. The true character of the false spirit is evident, and the prophecies of Revelation are very powerfully relevant in today's world. Okay, one more topic about the woman riding the beast and the unity that is evidently growing between Rome and Washington, D.C. The new decor of the Oval Office, of President Biden's Oval Office, uh, has made the news this month. And I actually really think it's cool. I, I've noticed a lot of arguing about uh, the yellow curtains, but you know, I'm not an interior decorator, so I won't take a look at color schemes and things. But I'll say I love the bust, the bronze busts that are there in the room of, uh, of Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez and some really great pit paintings on the wall, some great presidents, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington. So it's really cool stuff. They even have a piece of the moon. Uh, Lunar dust, uh, lunar rock in the Oval Office. It's it's some pretty cool stuff in there. But there was something uh, that that also caught my eye, and it's best to look at it from the viewer's perspective. In other words, as President Biden addresses the United States from his desk in the Oval Office, there's something else that uh, is going to, that caught my eye. Right on the table behind him, I'll get out of the way so you can kind of see, but right on the table behind him, he's got pictures of his family here. Uh, And then right here over his left shoulder on the right of the viewer's perspective is a picture of uh, of him and uh, Pope Francis. Now, let me make a couple of points about this. Just imagine for a second if, uh, if... Donald Trump had a picture of his spiritual advisor, Paula White, over his left shoulder. Now, now I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, you know Paula White is is uh, any better uh, of a spiritual advisor um, or worse than Pope Francis. I'm really, at the end of the day, they're they're both kind of of the same system. But just imagine if he had a picture of him and his spiritual advisor over his left shoulder, how people would blast him about the separation of church and state. But as you read on various websites about this picture of Pope Francis and Joe Biden, you find praise for 
a picture of keeping his religious faith strong in his, in his mindset, that it's there in the Oval Office. Uh, it's, very, it's a very, you know, different treatment for him from the mainstream media. But as I've always said, uh, two wings, same bird. It's, it's all the same stuff to me prophetically. It all means the same thing. It's all just different ways of looking at it, but it's all the same, the same bird. But it's a very significant gesture, I think, too, because to have that picture on uh, right off your shoulder. You know, again, I'm th- not thinking from his perspective. It's behind him. I'm thinking about what you're teaching the viewer as they see. It reminds me of the old cartoons, you know, where you have the angel on one, on one shoulder and the demon on the other. And, and the idea is that they're inspiring you. They're speaking to you. They're, they're you know, they're, they're trying to lead you down a path. And here now we have in the Oval Office, we have Pope Francis on the shoulder, basically, of the president. It's something noteworthy because uh, we know that right after he was elected, he, he told a group of Catholics, we're back in charge. We know that one of the first phone calls made was between Pope Francis and Joe Biden. And they pledged to one, of the, one another to work together. The wound is healing. Revelation 13 and the two powers of Revelation 13 are beginning to work closely together together. That's absolutely noteworthy to the prophecy student. To everyone else, it's not a big deal. Some, it might be a big deal for this reason or that reason, but really it's not. But when you look at it prophetically, it's a big deal. Rome and Washington are working more in sync, and that is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Okay, before we get to our major second focus of of this episode, there's several other items that really, honestly, again, deserve more time. Uh, I have heard from several of you. In fact, I'll I'll give you this challenge. If you're watching still and you want this uh, more often, you want this like every two weeks, go hit the like button down below. It might encourage me to to try to do this more often, but they take a lot of time. I do pastor three churches, and so they do take a lot of time to put these episodes together. Um, So not everything gets the time it needs to, uh, that, 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 to, to really discuss it. So a few noteworthy things that I just want to kind of quickly point out. And again, as usual, you will have um, uh, links down below to, to the things that we discuss. All right, we had in February of 2020, a year ago, a whole bunch of CEOs suddenly resign, step down, retire. Kind of just boom, 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 boom. Late January through February, all right before March. Right in March when COVID hit officially, uh, or at least at the time it was official, now we know it hit earlier in the United States, but at that time it was March 13 when things shut down, the economy, things have been changed, masks are on people, the whole bit. Things drastically changed, of course, in March. But just before that, almost as if they knew it was coming, a bunch of CEOs, you know, got their buyouts, retired, stepped down the whole bit. Here's just a list uh, of, of some of the notable ones. Just again, from those few weeks of end of January through February, you've got Jim, uh, Jim Hackett of Ford. You've got Bob Iger of Disney, Jenny Rometty of IBM. You've got Jim Murren of MGM. You have AJ Benga of MasterCard. You have Les Wexner of several mall brands. You've got Matt uh, uh, Lavacic. I don't don't pay attention to Harley Davidson, so I don't know how to say his name. I apologize. But these are just to name a few. These are just the ones that I, I figured you might know or the companies at least that you know. They just all suddenly, within days really of each other, weeks of each other, all stepped down, retired, just kind of quickly, again, right before the economy, shoo, took a big downturn because of COVID. So then you get to February of 2021 and, and less than, than that amount, but all of a sudden you started to see people step down and retire or, or resign again. Just, I'll just name two quick ones for you. Uh, this month we had Jeff Bezos, of course, uh, from Amazon, and then Jeff Zucker, uh, the president of CNN, stepping down that, uh, stating that he will step down here soon. And it just made me wonder, uh uh-oh, we saw this last year just before COVID. And then, of course, during COVID, you saw other CEOs stepping down too. But it was right before it hit. Boom, you just saw a bunch. And it made me wonder, uh, do these guys know something that I don't know? What else are we heading into? What else do they know that we don't know? Because 
Last year, they seemed to know something that we didn't know. Now, our goal here isn't to predict things, uh, but to be mindful of things in light of Bible prophecy. So I just want to point out and say, hey, what do these guys know? What are we supposed to be getting ready for? You know what we need to do? Stay focused on Jesus. We didn't all do that, do a great job of that in 2020. Hopefully we've learned our lesson. So whatever 2021 brings us, stay focused on Jesus. Then a very sad, sad, disgusting thing is taking place in, in, in February and deserves more time really than, than what we're going to give it. But, uh, but just some disgusting, violent acts um, uh, in 2020, especially in February against Asian Americans. Um, you know, as Jesus told us, the love of many will grow cold. And we're definitely seeing that people are, are unfairly angry at Asian Americans for COVID-19. Some really brutal videos coming out of, of just violent, just random, random people wearing masks and hoodies, and cities, not just like one city, it's not like one gang, it's across the United States of, you know, and it seems to be mostly elderly. I don't, I, I don't actually know if that's true statistically that it's mostly elder, elderly, but at least the ones that are making the news uh, seem to be elderly. And it's just atrocious, just disgusting. People walking up and pushing them, hitting them. Uh, a gentleman died. Uh, a Chinese man had all of his teeth knocked out when he was just blatantly punched right in the face as he was walking down the street by a total stranger who, you know, is a coward, covering up their faces and then running off. Disgusting. It's disgusting. There's videos of people, you know, uh, there, one, one man coming to a, a, an Asian American, I don't know which, which specific ethnicity, um, but uh, an Asian American man pumping his gas and, and this guy's just start yelling at him, did you know in history, every terrible plague has come from your people and, and just, just ruthless, disgusting stuff. Jesus told us, love of many will grow cold. And so um, be careful out there. This world's getting sick and evil. There's a lot of twisted people. Hatred is becoming far too unrestrained, more and more prevalent. And it's just, just a sick world. Protect your children, protect the elderly. Um, watch over people. And I hope that as Christians, we stand up. If we see something like this, if we hear uh, someone being mistreated, uh, learn from the Good Samaritan story and, and get involved and, and step up to the plate. It's really disgusting what's going on. All right, something a little, a little lighter, though, uh, before we get to our, our, our second major focus. Uh, this caught my eye this week. Uh, Amazon is now promoting their new uh, building that they're going to build across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. Uh, and this is, they're calling it the Amazon Helix. It's this pretty cool, you know, uh, Helix style building. Uh, almost looks like a Christmas tree that's decorated to me. Uh, but it's got these, this arboretum, this, uh, this, these trees and shrubs and flowers that are going to be on the outside. It's 22 stories tall. So it might look small in the picture, but it's going to be 22 stories tall. And, uh, and it's going to have, uh, you know, trees, as you can see, all around the outside. It's going to be open to the public. There are going to be some Amazon offices there, but it's also going to have an amphitheater. And of course, you're, you're going to be able to hike on some days uh, uh, outside the building. Uh, it's going to have a shopping center, so it's definitely going to be open to the public. Uh, and it's, and it's, got, it's, got an, it's got an inspiration from two things. And, uh, and I want to point out that, you know, the Bible predicts that predicts that uh, prophesies that we're going to head back towards Babylonian culture. And, uh, and we'll read this verse in a second, but two things kind of, um, inspired the design of this building. And, uh, and one of those is the double helix, the DNA, which is uh, genetic code is stored in DNA. So it's life really the who we're going to be is, is stored there. And then it's, uh, it's got an inspiration from the Babylonian hanging gardens. Uh, and so it kind of makes a lot of sense prophetically when you think about it. Sitting right across the street from Washington, or right across the river from Wa Washington, D.C., you've got this, uh, this double meaning. You've got the helix, which is the storage of information. And then you also have Babylon. And we're told that in Scripture that in the last days, the, uh, the ancient culture of Babylon will be the center of information that it will be the mouthpiece for, for the world. And so it kind of makes some symbolic sense that, uh, that this new building is being built there uh, at the Potomac River. 
uh, this, this symbol is actually used in Revelation 13, that Babylon is the mouthpiece for the Babylonian world, for the, for the harlot-driven world, that where the woman sits on the, har- on the waters, that its, its focus, its spiritual information is from Babylon. Catch this, Revelation 13, 2, speaking about the beast itself that she'll sit on. It says, now the beast, which I saw, was like a leopard. Uh, his feet were like the feet of a bear. And here you go, his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Now, National Treasure, it's in the link. Go check it out. You're going to get through all these details and what this all means. But if you're new to this stuff, real shortly, this is connecting to a prophecy in Daniel 7 where, uh, where, where we're get, being given the, uh, the timeline of empires. It'll be Babylon, then Medo-Persia, then Greece, then Rome, etc. And so the lion represents Babylon, the mouth like the mouth of the lion, the source of information, the dialogue, the speaking, the, the dogma, the doctrine of Babylon. Uh, this, and, and DNA is the, it, it is the, uh, the storehouse for genetic information. It is an information. So you've got this double helix inspired, or this Amazon helix inspired by the double helix of DNA and of uh, the hanging gardens of Babylon. It's pretty, pretty important then to, you know, many of us might just go, oh, wow, cool architecture. And I thought, well, cool architecture. It actually is cool architecture. Um, but there's a lot of meaning in things. And we see the Bible being very relevant to keeping our eyes on what things really mean. All right, our second major focus. Uh, we've been discussing, you know, as soon as we've started doing these prophetic forecasts, and these reviews of, of Bible news, uh, we've seen a lot of discussion about signs in the sky. Uh, we got it to it pretty heavy in February uh, and in January and, and yeah, October. It, it's been coming quite a bit. A lot of stuff about signs in the sky. We know we've been warned about fire from the heavens, from, from the beast. We know we are warned about the angel of light appearing. We know about uh, spirits in Revelation 16 going out to the world and deceiving, deceiving people to believe in, in uh, what they're saying. We know that there's going to be, and then we also know there's natural signs in the sky that Jesus tells us about in Matthew 24. So there's a lot to do with signs from the sky. And uh, February 2021 didn't let us down. A lot of discussions about uh, things in the sky. All right, two, and the first two stories I want to mention to you both took place in the state of Florida. Uh, first of all, the and this is only a picture of one, but apparently there were a whole bunch of these holes in the sky, is what people were calling them. Uh, they're actually called fall streak holes, and they're basically holes that are punched by airplanes as they pass through the clouds. Now, of course, um, planes pass through clouds thousand times a day, if not more. And they don't, they don't always make false streak holes. In fact, very rarely do they make false streak holes. These are very rare, but they do happen and they seem to happen uh, more often, still rare, but more often in places like in places like Florida, it has to have the right moisture, the right weather, the right altitude for these fall streak holes to appear. And basically on a very cloudy day, you'll just have these sudden holes. And sometimes, and you could look at these, um, if they're pretty cool. You could take some, a Google search of, of fall streak holes. It's pretty cool. These, they're total, totally natural, total, completely understandable scientific reasoning behind them. But what is important for us to mention in a prophetic discussion is that, uh, is that social media was a buzz. Are the aliens here? UFOs doing this? Uh, are, they, are they trying to peer, uh, peek at us through the skies? Or what are the UFOs? Social media was a buzz with UFO talk. And again, as we've been pointing out, not fearful UFO talk, not, ah, run for your lives, the aliens are here, but wow, cool aliens are here kind of discussion. And so uh, social media, you know, um, NASA had to come out with an article and Weather Channel had to come out with an article. A lot of people had to come out with uh, articles explaining false streak holes because it was all over, all over social media and the internet. The aliens are here. Cool. The aliens are here. There's a fascination right now, strong fascination and excitement for aliens. 
We know that there isn't, you know, life on other planets that is coming to abduct us. Life out, outside of our planet is perfect. If there's life, and I believe there's life on other planets, and I've said that before, but they're perfect beings. Outside of this world, it's a universe of love and kindness who, that all revolve with Jesus at the center. Our sinful planet's the only sinful planet in the universe. Um, but what, what, is, what the fascination is, what the marveling is all about, is people are being programmed. Something good and great is coming to save you and to help you. We know the truth. that Jesus is coming from the sky. He's coming from the east. But at the heart of the spirit of Antichrist is this idea that either Mary or an alien or some other created being is coming to save us human or the creator or the creation is at the center where the truth on the opposite side is the creator jesus christ is coming also in florida was actually it actually took place just days after these fall streak holes on february 9th social media was a buzz again in florida about an apparent ufo sighting many 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 posts of people announcing that the aliens were here in fact, a few people were like, hey, see, those false recalls weren't scientific. They were the aliens. These are the aliens who are here. They are coming. The hashtag, some of you will know what that means, but the hashtag UFO Florida was trending and people were positive that this is what they were seeing. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, we are seeing an alien. This is a UFO. This is what we're doing. This is what we're seeing. And again, people were not afraid. People are not screaming. And why I'm saying that is, is, isn't that I think people should be afraid. I think people should realize that, that what the truth is. But, uh, but you go back to like the War of the Worlds, you know, Orson Welles kind of thing. People were scared, but now people are excited. They can't wait to see this. People are marveling after the spirit of Antichrist. No suicides reported. People aren't flocking to grocery stores to load up on water and things or toilet paper. People were amazed and they were marveling at it. They couldn't wait to see what it really was, waiting for it to land. Well, it turns out it was actually just a ballistic missile test from a submarine off the Florida coast. And the funny thing is that people were disappointed by that news. They would rather it have been a UFO or an alien coming to visit. People are definitely being programmed. They're waiting for this angel of light to descend from heaven, a Fatima-like moment where someone's going to come, you know, and it's not going to be Jesus yet. The Antichrist comes first, right? The man of sin comes first, then comes Christ. It's going to be a spirit of Antichrist. Now, also on this topic, we've been noticing uh, that also... Um, Pilots, both naval pilots, you know, military pilots and uh, commercial flight pilots have been noticing things in the sky. Weird objects, jetpack man, uh, weird, you know, UFOs. We've talked about the, the naval pilots who in 2015 and, and other years saw uh, unexplained aerial phenomena, right? Well, it happened again just a few days ago here in February when an American Airlines pilot flying from Cincinnati to Phoenix uh, saw something buzz right past their plane. He said it was right above them. In fact, uh, I want you to listen to his radio call here. He's, he's speaking to the tower at Albuquerque. Um, and, and unfortunately, I don't know why, but no one replies to him, but he's asking what in the world was it? Uh, notice, notice, listen to this and, and notice what he says. We just had something go right over the top of us that I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top of us. We just had something go right over the top of us that I hate to say this looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast that went right over the top of us. So the tower doesn't respond to him, but when asked later, American Airlines actually has an official statement on this. Here's what they said. Following a debrief with our flight crew and additional information received, we can confirm this radio transmission was from American Airlines flight 2292 on February 21st. Uh, from there, American Airlines uh, said you can direct all questions to the FBI 
In other words, it was strange enough that they reported it to the FBI. And since then, the FBI has actually confirmed that they are looking into it. That's all they'll say because they don't discuss invest open investigations, but they're saying they are aware of it and, uh, and, and, are, and are looking into it. What was it they were seeing? They were just over, uh, I, I believe they were Northeast uh, New Mexico. White Sands Air Base, you know, isn't all that far from, from where they were. Was it another missile? I mean, maybe, probably dangerous if it was, flying so close to an airliner. Um, but in the end, the point shows that unexplainable sightings are happening at a rapid case. I mean, just constantly, boom, boom, boom. Weird things are taking place in the sky. Uh, and whether they can be explained, whether they're false streak holes or ballistic missiles, or whether they're unexplained aerial phenomena or mysterious jetpack men, right? Jetpack man, or whether it's uh, this this uh, this missile-looking thing. I, you know, he kind of can't really explain it, but he kind of thinks maybe it's a missile as it goes over. Whatever. There's a lot of mysteries taking place in the sky, and uh, just keep paying attention to this. People are being programmed that something's happening in the sky. Our eyes are being turned to look upward and we know who comes first. Signs are in the sky. That false spirit, that false fire from the heavens, from Revelation 13 is approaching. Now let's look forward to March. And we don't have a lot of time left here. We only got two things that I want to kind of briefly mention to you, but I really want you to be mindful of these things as we head into March. It was reported here in February that 10 pounds of C4 explosives were, were stolen from the 29 Palms Air Base, uh, kind of in our neck of the woods, south of us a couple hours, but uh, in the Mojave Desert. Uh, 10 pounds of C4. Now, just to put that into perspective, because I don't really know what that means. Personally, some of you might, but four pounds uh, of C4 can easily destroy a bus RV sized vehicle. Uh, so 10 pounds, you know, is, is, can, do, can do some damage at least. Uh, and as authorities get closer and closer to finding out who stole it, what is their purpose, what are they doing with it, might be totally meaningless. It might be a setup. And if, if you can steal C4 from 29 Palms, where else are they stealing it from? Where else do we not know that they're getting stuff from? So just keep an eye on that. It's a scary thought. With all the violence and nastiness in our world and the attacks and the hate, you know, with the love growing cold, and then you've got, you know, C4 disappearing from military bases. It's kind of scary. We need to be walking with God in these unsure times, don't we? Lastly, I want to remind you, I brought this up before, and we'll have a bigger report on this uh, at the end of March. But uh, March 5th through 8th, it is still planned for Pope Francis to be the first pope to visit Iraq while being personally invited by the Iraqi government. We talked about that quite a bit last month, so I won't spend too much time on that topic, but the Iraqi president said this about his invitation to Pope Francis. Uh, he said, uh, it, the visit, will be a message of peace to Iraqis of all religions and serve to affirm our common values of justice and dignity. Uh, question, what common values do Iraqi Christianity and Islamic Iraqi uh, religion uh, share concerning justice and dignity. Uh, there isn't a whole lot, but really, again, what this is uh, talking about, speaking of discussing, is that false identity of human fraternity with, of course, uh, human at the center. Uh, we've been warned about messages like this, specifically, actually, in the Bible, that when Jesus isn't at the center of it, Many will say peace and safety, and then sudden destruction comes upon them. We've got to be careful and mindful of these things as we move forward, uh, paying attention to what's really being said in the news. You, you hear what they're saying. You see what they're saying. But what is it really saying? You've got to put the Bible at the center of your prophetic vision. You've got to be paying attention to these things. You've got to stay focused as things continue to unfold. You've got to keep your eyes upon prophecy. Keep your eyes upon Jesus and see what he has in store for you today.